Hello, hello everybody. Welcome one more time to Roman Just Codes. My name is Roman. I am a Flutter and Dark GDE. Welcome to the Flutter Go Global Ga Games Glo Flutter Global Gamers Challenge. It's a little bit of a mouthful right there, but I just want to say thank you so much everybody for joining. We're going to be discussing the challenge, the, the Global Gamers Challenge sponsored by Flutter, Global Citizen and the Google Wallet. So thank you so much everybody for joining. I see a couple of folks already making their way in. Dion, how you doing, buddy? Thank you so much, everybody. So here we are again. I know we hadn't done it in a little bit, but we're coming back again, building, you know, creating this type of sessions for everybody uh, so that you can enjoy uh, this kind of content, okay? So uh, we're gonna go right away into what we're gonna be doing. So today, we're, it's actually mostly about discussing the Flutter Global Gamers Challenge, sponsored again by Global Citizen, Flutter, and the Google Wallet. We're gonna be uh, telling you exactly what's required for this challenge, what it is about. You know, some people think that th you're late in order to join this challenge, not at all. You have plenty of time to join it. I'm even gonna be doing some life coding right now, that way you can see, you know, how, how good it is to, again, play with Flutter, use it as the framework, as, the, uh, as this uh, amazing UI framework for building amazing experiences in a multi-platform uh, fashion. So we're gonna be doing a lot of, a lot of, cool, uh, a lot of those cool things. So stay tuned. That's exactly what we're gonna be doing. I'm even gonna be showing the, the, the app that I'm actually building. I'm building myself a game for this. I'm gonna be submitting one for the Flutter Global Gamers Challenge. I'm gonna be telling you again a little bit of, of the game that I came up with, which I'm calling it uh, Recycling Vin. So Recycling Vin is supposed to be like a kid you know, a spirited kid. He's going to be like, uh, uh, you know, going through the world, picking up trash, picking up uh, a thing, recycling that to power his weapons and, and, and killing fracking steins and getting badges and stuff like that. So I made a whole like, a, you know, um, story behind this character. I'm going to tell you a lot more about it. I see other people making their way in. Diego, how you doing, buddy? Thank you so much for joining. Um, I love the support that everybody's providing. So yes, why don't we start right away? Because we got a lot to cover in this uh, session. So we're going to be discussing today about the Flutter Global Gamers Challenge. What 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 challenge is that? I know that they started uh, a while back, but you know what is it about? Do I still have time to join this uh, you know this challenge? So I'm going to tell you all about it. So that's exactly what we're here for. Okay. So actually, you know, we say, what is the Global Gamers Challenge? So the Global Gamers Challenge was this challenge created by, again, Global Citizen, Flutter, and Google Wallet. They kind of, you know, it's inspired by the mission of the United Nations, facilitated playing for the Planet uh, Alliance, which Google joined in 2023. Um, international advocacy organization, Global Citizen, and Flutter, uh, you know, Google's open source framework for building multi-platform applications. They're partnering to host this amazing Global Gamers Challenge. They say that um, one in three people in the world play games. So they want to motivate the young people, everybody out there who's a gamer to actually become kind of like a social activist, you know, help, uh, you know, with sustainability and create good practices and, and making people more conscious about uh, the environment and whatnot through gaming. So, you know, Actually, I think this is a really good cause and something that resonated with me. That's why I said I wanted to do this challenge myself. But I also wanted to provide everybody with the tools uh, and information that you guys need in order to join this challenge as well. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I see Manuela son exactly because of the because of the hair. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Marco, how you doing, buddy? Thank you so much again for joining. Again, we're discussing about the Global Gamers Challenge. So I think, uh, Diane, I think that's, I think maybe that's why I got that uh, the character from. <laughs> so let's see. So next one, what are sustainable games? Because people say like, okay, so yeah, I'm building a game, but I could build any game. What is a sustainable game? So sustainable games are, again, those are games that use the power of play to inspire a positive environmental action. In this case, for example, like you can imagine Candy Crush, uh, but instead of crushing candies, you're crushing plastic pollution. In the case of my uh, my game right here, for example, if I show you, uh, my character is supposed to be like a, a character that picks up trash to power his weapon, uh, like a laser, power also by uh, like uh, a, Brus a Brussels sprouts, stuff like that. So I created like this character around this whole idea of sustainability uh, in you know, the environment, being very conscious about the environment and whatnot. So it's a lot of cool things. So, you know, 
they, they try to inspire positive environmental action uh, uh, you know around these topics for example encouraging a reduction in home energy use some people say that um, you know also uh, um, encouraging a reduction in the use of single-use plastics so there's a lot of things they mentioned that in Southeast Asia they have some of the highest levels of plastic pollution but they also got a lot of gamers in there as well so they try to cater to those people and try to motivate them to be more conscious about the single use of plastics also they mentioned the encourage of public transportation and overland options for longer distances so you see they're trying to tackle these social um, uh, um you know concepts and they try to frame it around gaming that way you can motivate people but uh in an unconscious way kind of tap into their uh, you know, uh, like their conscience and say, you know, you need to be conscious about the environment, the use of single use plastic, using uh, transportation, public transportation, instead of you driving. So this is how th the reason why they're building this challenge. You use a cool framework, you know, a very popular multi-platform framework like Flutter. You also, uh, uh, in, uh, for example, you also participate in this challenge with Global Citizen. You're a citizen of the world, but also you get some cash, you know, uh, in the process. So why not joining this type of challenge? Uh, what else do they have? So about the, you know, about sustainable uh, games and whatnot, or the the challenge itself. So the challenge itself has three main sponsors, which are Flutter. Again, Flutter, for those of you who just, you know, woke up today flutter is actually an amazing ui framework um supported by google is open source and it all allows you to create amazing experiences high performing experiences natively compiled experiences in a multi-platform fashion um you know nine different platforms right now and then you can use it to create amazing experiences and why none other than this framework to create really cool stuff Google Wallet, Google Wallet is another uh, one of the sponsors uh, and they're also providing, they're throwing in some cash for like a bonus feature of this application. You need to find a way to add Google Wallet to the to your game as you're building it. So it's a pretty cool challenge. I definitely encourage it. Camilo, how you doing, buddy? I see a lot of people making their way and, you know, thank you so much for, for representing and, and supporting. So, uh, and of course, last but not least, Global Citizen, Global Citizen, which is this organization. Uh, they're actually going to have like a huge concert in New York as well. So it's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool things going on uh, around this challenge, not just building the game per se. So let me discuss the prices. So for some of you who say, yeah, I don't know, what, 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 kind, of, what kind of incentive do I have in order to build a game you know, in, in an eight week period, because they started, um, um, I'll, I'll tell you exactly, you know, the, the time that you have left and whatnot, but you, they're going to be 10 finalists. The winners will receive a trip to New York City in September of this year to meet the Flutter team for a day of workshops and mentorship, followed by the opportunity to celebrate their achievements, of course, with uh, up to 60,000 uh, other global citizens at global uh, at the Global Citizen Festival in 2024, uh, later this year. But again, the cool thing about it is that you're gonna get a travel to New York City, a day with the Flutter team, VIP tickets, digital recognition, you're gonna get a swag pack, and $103,000 plus in prices and a lot of cool things and of course the fact that you're gonna say oh look my game made it in there so it's pretty cool so these are you know some of the incentives that you have to join this uh, amazing challenge also uh not only cash but even if you let's say have a demo video check this out you may not you don't even have to be a coder in order to join this challenge you can create like a cool demo video and you're gonna get for example like some digital recognition and a swag pack uh, in, for example, like you also could have a best educational content for like in that category. Also, honorable mentions, maybe for those who don't make it to the uh, 10 finalists or get uh, any other categories, you get an honorable mention, but you also get a digital recognition and a swag pack. Imagine like a cool swag, you know, either Flutter, Google, uh, and the global citizen people, um, you could actually get a cool um, you know, swag pack. Also, community choice. Like, I believe it's like the community is going to pick which is their favorite and you also get a swag pack as well. So, either way, I think you're going to win. This is a win-win situation. So, you still have a chance to uh, to submit the, your project. The I believe the, the deadline, actually, I'm going to show it in a minute. I believe it's March 5th. So, you got a couple of weeks still. I'm going to show you even today. I'm going to be like a quick game. I'm going to, and then I'm going to show you other things about the, the challenge, which are really, really important, really enticing to, uh, to, to join this challenge. 
So the prices, again, for the first price, $7,500 for the first price. Second price, five grand. Third price, uh, uh, 25 grand. Um, virtual coffee with a Google Wallet team member, if you do like the wallet, in, the Google Wallet integration and uh, the promotion of the uh, project subject to Google's discretion. So this is this is like the best integration. Uh, if you do that, then you're gonna get that uh, additional cash. If you do the best Google Wallet integration, which that's what I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, also now, if you also do it, let's say in Japanese, you get like also best integration, first, second, and third pr uh, price. You get seven uh, seventy five hundred um dollars and the virtual coffee with a google wallet team member and the promotion of the project uh of course subject to google's uh discretion so you see you get a lot of prices you get uh you know really cool stuff uh, you get you know vip tickets you get trips you get the again the recognition from the community and of course you know um you're gonna get you're gonna be able to meet the google team uh, the, the the flutter team as well so it's pretty cool Awesome. So I like that. I like the prices. So this is, you know, a really cool motivation. Um, let's discuss a little bit the judging criteria. So the judging criteria has to be around these six overall concepts, like overall execution, kind of like, you know, they will be evaluated based on whether they're responsive to screen size changes. They can work with different modes like, you know, uh, trackpad, mouse, keyboard, use of animation. We're going to be discussing that in a little bit. Um, you know, projects will be evaluated based on the visual appeal and implementation of animation widgets. That's why I started like, you know, creating like really cool animations and whatnot. Originality, how original is your project? Uh, you know, that's, they will be evaluated based on the uniqueness and creativity. So, you know, you make sure that you include an innovative and engaging game concept. For example, my concept, of course, is not that original, but at least I try to make it, you know, around a, a character, you know, something cool around the, the whole theming and whatnot. But at least, you know, I wanted to submit something and just, you know, a chance to some cash as well. You know, best potential value for the community. Again, remember um, those those that actually provide, you know, that have the potential to enrich the Flutter community. Uh, this includes, but it's not limited to educational materials, demos, product feedback and whatnot. Also, your project needs to be open source. That way you can help other developers as well. Use of the environmental sustainability content. Again, this is back again, relevant to the theme of sustainability and global impact. And, uh, and you have the multi-platform category. You know, if you were using, for example, like you make a multi-platform, you make a mobile desktop web or whatever other uh, platform. Um, you know, they will be evaluated based on the quality across all of those platforms. But let's say if you add the Google Wallet, you can only do it for Android, I, um, uh, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but at least you can have a way to say, you know, uh, maybe I'll limit uh, some of the functionality that I have on the other platforms, but I'll do the Google Wallet integration just for the Android. But at least you don't alienate the other users, right? Your other players. And last but not least, the impact. So does your game have the potential for real world impact? Does your game build community and encourage interaction? So this is pretty much what they're trying to achieve with this, uh, you know, with this, uh, with this challenge right here. And of course, remember, like I mentioned, the bonus challenge is the Google Wallet. So if you're up for that extra credit, they, they you know, Global Citizen, they partner with the Google Wallet to offer that additional challenge to deploy an innovative integration in the Google Wallet API. I'll show you what I did with my uh, Google Wallet uh, uh, applic um, integration. Uh, because you can do a lot of cool things with the Google Wallet. So in this session, I'm going to have uh, a couple of the office hours. Today, I'm going to show you like how to build your quick game. And then in the next office hours, we'll do the Google Wallet integration. That way you see how easy it is to integrate your Google Wallet and you get a chance to get some cash in the process. So why don't we do that? Now, these are the frameworks and tools that I recommend you do. Are you looking to join this challenge? Do you think you still, you got the chops to join it? If you're a coder, again, now this is for you. Remember, you could do a demo video, you could do some promotional content, you could do some educational content, but let's say for you, for those of you who are gonna tackle it based on some code, you could use, these are my my go-to frameworks that you could do. So the, the frameworks that I suggest are Flutter, of course, the, the, the core framework for building these games is gonna be Flutter. 
Now, let's say you want to add uh, uh, some aspects to that. For example, you want to do uh, you want to do add a leaderboard. You want to do uh, real time uh, communication between players. You want to do authentication. Firebase is the way to go. For me, I would integrate Firebase for authentication. Hosting, if you're going to be building your game for the web, you're going to do Flutter Web. You can do Firebase Hosting. You could use Cloud Firestore to store your information about your leaderboards, you know, and whatnot, your badges. Let's say if you're building, like, something cool and challenging for your game. Last but not least, if you want to step it up and you want to uh, take it to the next level, you could do Cloud Functions to Firebase. So it's pretty cool. So Firebase would be an amazing um, a framework, an amazing tool that you can add, uh, you know, to pair it up to your game. Also, of course, for those of you who are building something now more robust, more like a, a true game, you know, and using something legit, I definitely recommend Flame. I'm not using Flame in myself in this game because I felt like my game was really much simpler than that. But uh, you could definitely recommend game. I know the, the, the guys that do Flame. My main man, Luke, is right there. The Flame guy. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I recommend doing Flame. If you got the chance to jump on that, fr on that uh, framework, please do. Um, and then he's going to make your game a lot robust. And last but not least, my favorite animation tool, Rive. Remember, animation is one of the criterias that will differentiate your game. Originality, uh, the use of animations. Rive is going to bring another level to your applications that no other uh, animation framework will do. So that is the reason why I integrated arrive in my anime in my uh, in my application for using my complex animations because it's gonna bring a level of quality that no other framework has done so kudos to the uh, guys that arrive one of my favorite tools uh, actually I recommend using it so again those are my four main tools and packages to use of course I'm gonna recommend using other packages for example like for animations you could do also flutter animate like for animating uh, some flutter components inside of your flutter application of course you're gonna use the flutter Google wallet package to do the Google wallet integration um, I know that some people are gonna be like yeah so what are you gonna do for state management I'm gonna go uh, like my like my main Majid you know my main man Majid how you doing buddy so let's say when uh, you know if you want to pick your state management for your application I say it depends you know you can go you can go simple you can go complex pick whatever you know uh, uh, whatever rocks your boat whatever makes you productive you can implement something cool, something simple. Don't go, don't, you know, over engineer it, but you can uh, add, for example, like a state management solution such as block, river pod, provider, anything you want, get X, whatever you want, as long as that makes you productive and you can create some clean code and you can put something cool out there. Okay. So uh, that's exactly what I recommend. I'm going to show you now a couple of, uh, again, um, part of the, you know, the things that I built for my game. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So there it is. So now we will see here a little bit of, uh, uh, for example, like how I built my game. My game is called Recycling Vin. It's about uh, Balbuena Son, the dyer would say. It's a little kid called Vin. His name is Vincent. So I call it Vincent. But it's short for Vin because it's just a play around the words of like recycling bin. So I call it Recycling Vin. And Vin is a kid that, you know, goes around the world picking up trash. And then it's kind of like, remember the movie Back to the Future? The DeLorean, uh, you know, gets powered by trash. So this is pretty much what I did here. So let me show you a little bit of the game concept. Again, it's still I'm still uh, wrapping it up, but I'm going to show you a couple of the features that I implemented on this game. So check this out. This is the, this is the, the landing page, of course. And then when you click on start, it introduces you into like a, a little bit of a, you know, kind of like a onboarding. So it tells you about Vin, you know, he's an eco-friendly warrior. All of these animations were created using Rive. So again, kudos to the Rive folks for putting something really cool that you can create SVG animations and bring it into your Flutter applications to create really cool stuff. So, you know, introduces you to Vin, tells you what he is, what he does, and what, he, what he's about. When you hit next... It tells you the enemy. The enemies are fracking steins. I call it around that because of the fracking, you know, uh, concepts. So I say, you know, you got to destroy fracking steins as you make your way through the game. 
Then you have like a you have a, like a laser which is actually powered by Brussels sprouts. So it's pretty cool. Like you know you you can destroy the Frankenstein's, you collect recyclables, and then you get badges along the way. And then you have to recycle as you go. So you pick up cans like metal cans. Uh, uh, plastic bottles, plastic bags, uh, you know, cardboard boxes, and then as you pick up these things, then you get power, right? And that is the reason why I build it like that. So let me show you uh, the gameplay a little bit. So once you hit let's go, then the game starts, you know, the character is there, is just walking, and then what you could do, you just press on the little bolt to shoot, like the, to shoot the enemy. You see how immediately when I picked up the the cardboard, it became like a, like a little cart, like out of a out of a box. But you can still shoot your laser. You're picking up trash along the way. You can move. You see how the control? This is like a custom control made out of a. You see like a like a like a recyclable uh, like bottle cap, right? And then you have to shoot uh, lasers. Uh, you know as you pick up trash and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I made it like that because I wanted to again bring a lot of uh, you know interactivity, bring the concept that you know drive the concept home of that, bring uh, like all those elements of you know custom components, custom widgets, animations, and all of that into one single application. And this is exactly what I try to do here. Now I'm gonna go back and show you what I how I'm going to be integrating the Google Wallet integration into this game. This is what I'm going to be doing. So when you go to achievements, I'm going to ask people to sign uh, to, let's say, to authenticate with Firebase. Right now, I have it open, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So the achievements are as you make progress through the game, if you collect certain amount of, uh, let's say, plastic bags, you get a badge, like a bag buster badge. Like I'm calling it that. Can Crusher, if you're getting a lot of like cans, right? And last but not least, Plastic Pioneer. I have a bunch of other badges, but I wanted to start with something small. So, uh, then, of course, I can continue adding more features to this game. But now, after you've unlocked these badges, by after picking up a lot of things in the game, you could do that. Let's say if you tap on one of the badges, you add it to your Google Wallet, and then you can even exchange it with other people. If you click on Add to Google Wallet, Remember, this is an Android, so I'm going to um, you know, bag buster. So this is how it gets added to your Google Wallet. If you click on the button that says add, then it's going to try to add it to your Google Wallet. Then you can go to view wallet. Actually, I have to go back to, yeah, I have to, of course, do that. And I say open wallet. If you see now in my wallet, I have those uh, badges and the way that you can view the badges, you tap on one and then you see it like this. So this is the integration that I'm trying to build in the game where you can add your own badges. Uh, the QR code might even point to something right now. I don't have it hooked up to anything, but you see those images. Those images are also part of the Google Wallet integration that you need to do, which I'm going to be explaining in the next uh, office hours, how you can build like custom badges like this with your own images, your own QR code, your own metadata. And then that way you can make it like really cool and make it very, uh, you know, very personalized. Bag Buster, that's the one, the badge, if you get a lot of uh, bags picked up. Plastic Pioneer, if you like pick up a lot of a lot of bottles and stuff. And if you do like the cans, you get like the can crusher. You see how I was able to build the whole concept of you picking up a lot of cans. I'm going to reward you with a with a badge. And then maybe something like this. Uh, 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 maybe you can exchange it with other players. You, you can also, you know, brag about it. You know, how much uh, how many did you get your score and whatnot. So this is the kind of integration that you can you that you can do with the Google uh, wallet that the Google wallet is not just like for credit cards or like tickets or stuff like that. You can actually do generic uh, cards like this. You can integrate it with your games and make it more engaging. So this is the kind of uh, experience that I suggest you uh, guys implementing your games. And it's so easy to do. I'm gonna explain to, uh, explain to you how that integration th that integration uh, goes next time. Uh, you know, we do another um, office hours. But today I'm gonna be focused on building a simple game. I'm gonna show you how we can go about it and how then you can take it to the next level. You don't have to go like super crazy with it. I'm gonna show you even a little bit of the code. The, uh, for, um, I can start by showing you, for example, like how I started the design. Here, this is just a Figma file. I started creating like all my uh, mockups and whatnot, all my SVGs. I prepared them here in Figma. Then I was able to export all those SVGs 
and pour them into Rive. And then in Rive, I was doing the animations. So let me show you how in Rive, for example, and of course, again, Rive is an amazing framework, uh, it's an amazing uh, um, package, an amazing library that, that allows you to create motion graphics that you can add to your old, to your applications, whether, you know, Flutter uh, has uh, its own runtime that you can, that you can bring Rive into. So it's pretty cool. These are the, the, the animations that I create that I've been creating for the Recycling Vin game. I hope you can see it. Uh, I think in a minute you should. Okay, there it is. So you can like, I can zoom in and you can see like all those things that I've been putting together, like all those assets. I'm creating the animation separately and then I import them into Flutter. Then I pr uh, programmatically trigger them and whatnot. For example, here you can see uh, the little character, how, uh, how he plays, you know, and whatnot. I'm going to zoom in a little. It's so cool. Like it gives you like those crisp animations that you can bring in very easy to do. If you want to pick up Rive, I give you, for example, like a week or two to actually become good. If you want to get really, really good, I give you like a month or two. It, you just got to put yourself to it. I remember when I didn't know anything about Rive. Now is my go to tool for everything animations with uh, with my Flutter applications because you can get not only you can bring your, you know, the same animations that you get out of the box with Flutter, but this gives you another level of animations uh, that you can bring to bring the level of quality to your applications to another level. So totally, totally uh, recommend uh, Rive. Yes, uh, Rive runs on Windows. It runs, uh, uh, you know, you can do for the web, of course, Flutter, Android. Uh, I know you could do it for the web. Like I've seen people do like React and doing like some other, um, you know, web frameworks, they can bring it. Thank you, Marco, for that uh, That point. It also runs on Windows, so you can do a lot of cool things uh, with Rive. So you see, these are all my uh, components, which I was able to create as a, sim as a single file, then bring into Flutter. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that. So, and the reason why I, I did it like that, I had like um, a couple of assets that I just wanted to play with, so I can show you how, to, how you build something cool. Um, that way you can just bring it in and, and, and as well, you can do these kind of um, applications. So I created, I'm creating here like a separate uh, set of assets. I'm going to show you here, for example, like I'm going to create like a quick game. I'm thinking about like uh, imagine, like this is another game that I'm coming up with. Like you tap on your screen on the map. Imagine, for example, like you, sh you get shown a map and then you want to become, you want to plant trees uh, all over the world. As you tap on multiple points in your map, a tree comes out and, you know, just gets uh, planted. And then as many trees as you plant, you get like a bunch of scores uh, and then you become like the green thumb boss. Like, you know, you get like a, a rewarded by uh, planting a bunch of trees. So why don't we try something like that? We're, we're going to build a simple game. It's just like you tap anywhere on the screen and then you get like a tree planted, something like that. How does it sound? So what I'm going to do is I already did like a simple animation here of a tree. If you see, let, let me zoom in. This is just a very simple animation of a tree. What I want to do is when I tap anywhere on the screen, I see the tree like showing up and then I tap on another point in the screen. I show up, I move around and then I tap, I get another tree. If you get certain amount of trees planted, then you get like a badge, uh, you know, the green thumb, you know, boss or whatever. You know, that, that's, I'm just coming up with that. Then whenever you, you know, whenever you get, uh, let's say, to your goal, you're going to get like this little badge. Like I created this animation. It's, it's just it's just going to be like a little badge, like, a, you know, just showing you like a like a like a little recognition when you get to that goal, something like that. So let's let's build something simple. I'm not going to use any framework. I'm just going to use core flutter widgets. Because, I, again, I want to show you, there's no excuse for you to start creating, uh, you know, a Flutter application. You don't have to bring in, like, complex constructs. Flutter allows you to build really cool things with very minimal code. So why don't we start that? Uh, I'm going to now um, create, uh, see, this is the, the code of the game. But I'm going to be creating a brand new window. I'm going to be creating a brand new code again this code once i publish this game i'm gonna make it available to everyone so please no don't fret i'm gonna be helping you guys out i'm gonna be hooking you guys up so let me uh move this also out of the way and i'm gonna let's we're gonna be starting we're gonna create a brand new project a brand new game so let me flip the screen to here here we go so i'm gonna of course let me open it up see where am i i'm gonna go to my documents, I'm gonna go to Flutter, and I'm gonna be creating here 
just um, let's create a directory called games, right? And then inside of my directory called games, sorry. Here, I'm gonna be creating a brand new project. I'm gonna zoom in. I hope you guys can still see. Let me just bring it down a little bit. Let's just create something simple. I'm gonna say flutter create. I'm gonna call it green thumb, uh, you know, game. This is gonna be a game that will allow me to, uh, you know, uh, become a green thumb green thumb is kind of like the term for people who you know know how to plant and they have like a a knack for plants so that's exactly what we're trying to create here let's just uh, i'm gonna um, open again into that folder so let me go to that um i think i created the flutter then i went to games and then i created this green thumb game here we are perfect so let's uh, build it once let's make sure that everything is uh, up and running so i'll say flutter run but I'm gonna be hooking it up to my uh, tablet. Let me see if I my the iPad is connected. But I'm gonna hook it up to my to this tablet. That way you can that way you can see it right there. So let me uh, here it is. So I'm gonna hook it up to my. Let me do. Let me open up the emu, the emulator here again. Like the the you know the screen copy. That way you can see we're gonna be using the android of course um for this because we're you know we're eventually going to be using the google uh, we can even run it for the web but i just wanted to uh to do it to you on this or we could do it for the web as well but i just wanted to keep it here that way we do it okay perfect so let's go back to our let's do a one flutter run that way we run it for the first time let's just build something simple let's not go crazy or anything let's just build something very straightforward we don't have to go too crazy with this we're just going to create something simple right How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is doing. Uh, Dorian, how you doing, buddy? I, I love the fact that Flutter Conf Latin people are joining the session. Thank you, Dorian. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, again, shameless plug. Flutter Conf Latin coming this year. Uh, October, November, like around that time. We're going to be bringing that again for you guys. So thank you so much, uh, the team. Uh, from Flutter Conf Latin making their way in. So here we go. We just see something simple. Again, this is the basic Flutter demo homepage, right? So that's that's our basic. But remember, what I'm what I what I'm gonna try to do is something like this. Like I wanna be able to tap anywhere on the screen, and then something shows up because we're gonna be doing like a tree planting type of uh, application, right? So let's start uh, from the beginning. Let, you know, we have our main dot dart. Of course, I don't have to you know explain this too much. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to start uh, from scratch. Let's just delete all of this. Let's create an application. Let's just call it like green thumb app, something like that. Something like that. I'm going to be creating like a stateless widget. I'll call it green thumb app. It's going to be like our, our core application. For example, let's do something simple. Again, like I said, uh, we probably want to do, of course, the material app. Again, I'm, I'm just doing this is not so this is something that again, you know, we don't have to go too crazy with it because you guys should already be this is not a, a introduction to Flutter tutorial. If this is just me showing you that you can build cool things in a short amount of time using a framework such as Flutter. So let's try to do this. Let's do I'm going to call it uh, green, th uh, green thumb, uh, you know, game like the main game uh, page, for example. See, right now I'm not even adding routing or anything like that. We're just gonna build the basic core um, uh, aspect of the game and then we can add features later, okay? So my green thumb game is gonna be my main page. So let's do a, you know, let's make it as a stateful widget. I'm gonna call it green thumb game, right? So that it matches, oh, I call it green thumb game so that it matches my game right here. So let's do it again, green, thumb game just wanted to make sure that it matches that right now it's just a container a plain container and then that's it it's just it's just empty that's it perfect so we're good to go let's continue i'm gonna create a scaffold usually scaffold is the the, the way that you want to go uh let's create a, a, an empty container in here let's see how this is showing rebuild and that's it you see you got a plain container right there but that's not what I want. What I really want to do is actually I want to create a surface 
so that when I tap on it, anywhere I tap in my screen, I want to add something. Imagine, for example, when you tap, uh, you know, you tap here, 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 like a tree gets planted or something like that, right? So, uh, again, something like that. I'm just coming up. You can come up with your own ideas. This is just me showing you that you can build something cool, something simple with very minimal amount of code, okay? Uh, let me get rid of this. Uh, let's continue. Oh, sorry about that. Let me just save, re here we go. Let me save. Let me reload. Here we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so okay, we're still good. So now let's continue. So in, uh, in my scaffold, what I want to do is I want to make my my surface, which is the screen, a place where I can add widgets. Imagine, for example, like a stack. I'm I'm assuming that a stack would be a good way to do like because I'm gonna be overlapping things on top of it. Let's start creating like some of those constructs. So what I want to do as the core is actually I'm going to be adding a stack, right? So a stack, remember that stack takes like, uh, you know, some children widget. And uh, as the, the let's say the bottom most widget is going to be kind of like the, the, like the map. Let's say we're going to use a map right now. I'm not going to add it, but let's add something so that we can start going, right? That way we, we make some progress. I'm going to do, I'm going to add a container. And then let's make it, for example, like we want to make it like a uh, color. Let's do, you know, colors that green, for example, let's make it green. Let's start, for example, like with a, with a, with a, you know, with a, with a forest, you know, something like that. Okay. Maybe this doesn't work. Maybe tr let's try to do with a gradient. It maybe looks a little better. So let's do a decoration box decoration. And then I'll do, of course, I'll do uh, a gradient. Let's do a linear gradient. So I'm going to do a linear gradient from like dark green to like lighter green. So I'll do linear gradient. And then for example, uh, we'll do add two colors. So the main color will be, you know, you have a green at the top, you know, at the bottom. Let's use, let's do like colors, that colors are green, but let's actually do make this green like a little bit darker. Why not? So I could do something like, uh, let's see if this works. Um, so if I save it and uh, run it again, okay, I see the gradient going from left to right. Of course, you need to specify how you want it. So you have to say begin um, align alignment dot top. Let's do uh, top center, and then it ends at the alignment uh, alignment dot bottom center. So something like that. Begin and end. Uh, Oh, there you go, something like that. So that's kind of like what I want, right? So now that I have that, I want to be able to capture within this, uh, let's say within this widget, I want to be able to capture, uh, you know, the ability to tap anywhere on the screen and then I'm going to add something to it. For example, I click anywhere on the screen. I want to capture that position. And right when I add that thing, I'm going to be adding something to it. How about that? So let's make it really simple. So let's make it so that uh, actually, I can make this constants, of course, and uh, let me get rid of this. Here we go. So now, see, we have a container that covers the whole screen. So that's kind of like your surface, right? Let's start. Remember, what we want to do uh, is what I showed you here. Let me go back to the slides. We want to be able to add like this tree. Right now, we don't have the tree yet, but let's start with something something different. That way, you know, I can show you how, to, how you can build that. So we have the container. Let me add, for example, like, uh, you know, we want to be able to add something like this. You know, let me add, we're going to be able to, let's start with a container and let's make it, for example, like, uh, you know, 100 pixels by 100 pixels uh, and then make it red so that we can at least see that things are working. There you go. So we want to be able to add things on the screen on top of that surface, but not like this. We want to be able to make it programmatically. When you tap anywhere on the screen, you want to be able to add that, that square. So instead of doing this, instead of doing this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to grab my container, right? Uh, I want to add it programmatically into this stack. How do you do it? I don't know how you guys do it. I do it like this. For example, I'm going to do, I'm going to be creating a list of widgets and then I'm going to call it, you know, trees. And this is just like a, you know, like an empty list of widgets, right? So we just want like a, a an empty list of, of, of trees. That's all good. And I'm going to add, you know, my trees as, as I add trees 
into my uh, into the stack, for example, the trees get rendered into that stack right there. Let me sh let me show you, for example, like if I do in my in the init state, for example, super that init state, and then I say trees that add, for example, let's say in immediately as soon as I uh, load my application, I'm gonna add the first widget like a container, right? So if I do this, uh, for example, let's say if I uh, if I let me save, let me reload. Okay, so it doesn't render because you kind of want to do, for example, you want to do something like uh, positioned, and then let's say I want to because we're adding it to a stack. Remember, so I'm gonna do uh, add it at let's say a hundred pixels from the top, uh, you know, a hundred pixels from the left. Add it to my, you know, to the uh, to the tree uh, collection, and then it's gonna render in my, for example, in my stack right here. So that is what I'm going to be doing, but programmatically, right? And then once you do that, your tree should be able to render right here. But we're, this is not how we're going to do it. I'm just, this is just me explaining how we're going to be doing it programmatically, okay? So that is how we're going to do it programmatically. So now that I have my surface, I know what I'm going to be adding in here. I want to add those things programmatically to the stack. How do you do it? I'm going to do it simple. Uh, for example, what you could do is make the stack like the, the actual stack, you can make it, for example, you can make it clickable. You can do, for example, a uh, gesture detector, right? You can do like a gesture detector and you can do like the, you know, can you, you can use it on tap. Uh, but I think one that actually gives you the information about like the tapping capabilities you want to do, for example, like on tap down. The on tap down gives you, uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. My music just went out. Sorry about that. Let's continue. So yeah. So what I want to do is I want to be able to add uh, again, like on one tap down the details. The tap down details give you the position exactly of where you tapped. So you could do something like this. Like you can then once you tap, you could do something like you know uh, trees that add. Like I was saying, like you could do trees that add, and then when you add this to the collection. Uh, of course, you're going to have to, uh, you know, rebuild the widget so that the widget gets shown. So the first thing that I'm going to do is positioned. So I'm going to do a child and the child is like my container. So we're going to test with a simple container being added to my trees. But what do this, do this widget need? I want to capture the, the, the dot on the screen, the point on the screen where I tap. So the details has that information. So the way that you do it, you could do something like this. You could do top and then you do details dot global position. You could also use, um, uh, for example, like local position, but local position actually refers to the position, um, you know, the local position at which the pointer contacted the screen, but in regards to the parent. In my case, I'm going to use global because I'm using the whole screen, so that's okay. So I'm going to use DX and DX refers to... Um, Actually, you know, we're, we're talking about the top, so that should be the DY. So you want to do the vertical position of where you tapped on that, uh, on the, on the when you click, when you tap with your finger. And then just do the left position. Let's do global position.dx, something like this, right? Now, I, I, what I'm doing is when I tap down on my stack, on the whole surface, we should be able to see, you know, a, a square somewhere in there. Let me rebuild it. Uh, and let's see. So right now, nothing happens, of course, because we are not rebuilding the widget. So you see, I'm not using like any uh, any crazy, you know, like uh, constructs or anything. I'm just going bare bones, flutter core stuff. So now if I tap down, I should be able that when I tap, you see, I see like just, you know, regular squares on my screen, which is pretty much what I want. So you see, this is very simple. And we were able to do like, you know, even a very simple game that you can come up with that whenever you tap on the screen you get the uh the square okay so this square may, might not be you know of course centered and whatnot so what you really want to do is like when you tap you want to be able to center it under the mouse so you could you could fake it you could do something like this since i know that the my widget is 100 by 100 just offset it by like you know 50 pixels or something like that this is just a trick uh, let me rebuild it. So if you do something like this, see now it shows like right under, you know, the, the mouse. So we'll make it that if you tap, 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 a bunch of trees 
should be able to show. But right now we're only using a red square, right? But at least we got something going, you know, with this. This is kind of like where I'm, where, where I want to go. But now that I want to, now, now that I have my, my, let's say my object showing in the screen. Now let's replace it by, by the actual trees that I want to do. So in my, remember here, I want to be able to import all these Rive assets that I've created. Let me even play one of them for you. So you see the tree right there. So what I want to do is when I tap, I want to be able to put one tree instead of that red square. I want to be able to put one of those trees. So how do you do it? The way that you import Rive into your application is of course you need to one, install the Rive package, which uh, it gives you the runtime and a way for you to uh, add, uh, uh, programmatically trigger those animations in your code. So the first thing that you do is you have to export uh, your Rive uh, animation bundle, which is kind of like a binary file that you can import into your uh, Flutter application like this. So you come over here and you do download, you see download for runtime. So you're going to have to download that dot Rive file, which contains my tree and contains this, these two artboards. So we have one artboard called tree and one artboard called green thumb boss like that. So I want to be able to export this and it will contain both artboards or anything that is inside of this file. So I'll click that. It gets downloaded. That's okay. What I want to do is of course, I want to create a little folder here called uh, assets and then I'm going to have it called animations. And this is where I want to, uh, now let me, uh, actually I created it in here. So let's go back over. So here is where I added the assets animation. So let's bring that animation that I just downloaded. I'm going to bring it right over here into my, um, into my assets. Sorry about that. Let me have to, okay, here it is. So assets animations, let me bring that right over. Where did it land? Okay, here we go. So my green thumb, here we go. So inside of my animations, right? So you have the right file already imported. Now, what do you want to do? You want to access that right file. You want to be able to load it in your code. How do you do that? The first thing that you do is of course, I'm going to create, I'm going to import that package flutter, uh, flutter, pub, add Rive. that this is what actually adds the Rive package to your project. And now accessing that, uh, that Rive file and triggering animations in it, it's super straightforward. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second after, um, the flutter pub get, um, uh, finishes. So after that, I mean, meanwhile, what I can start doing is after I install, um, uh, fl uh, the flutter pub, uh, Rive package, right? So here I am. Now I need to go to my, I need to go to my pub spec that YAML. And I have to refer to that assets folder that I created right there because I need to know where to pull my assets from, right? So I have to uncomment this and say that my assets are in assets animations. So I'll do assets slash animations slash that way if i add any other animation files in there they should be coming from there right cool so now how do i make it so that uh where are we are we here yeah uh this is my source copy this is this so if i reload this this is still good this is all good this is exactly what i want now what how do i bring this green thumb rive animation in it very simple i'm gonna create uh like a little folder here called like widgets Let's call, let's create a file called tree widget. Yeah, very original, right? Uh, tree widget dot dart. So the way that you import Rive, you need to make it into a stateful widget. Why? Because you're gonna have a you're gonna have a Rive animation object that may rebuild um, at, at various times during the, its lifetime. You're also gonna be managing a state manage uh, uh, a state machine controller which actually needs to even even be disposed and you're going to be uh, uh preloading those assets as well so you're going to have to make it as a stateful widget because you're going to be rebuilding that widget um it, it's going to be needing that so that it, it can uh rebuild as many times as possible so that so that you can see those animations so i'm going to make it as a stateful widget initially let's call it just like that tree widget I'm going to make it as a stateful widget. Here we go. 
now because I installed the Rife package, you're gonna need two elements out of Rife. So you're gonna we're gonna create a you know let's let's have a Rife animation. So this will represent the actual animation, like the tree. And you're gonna have a state machine controller. So state machine controller is a construct from a Rive that you use to control your animations. For example, here, if you see, this is the state machine right here called tree. The state machine is the 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 sequence, uh, sorry, that. so it's the sequence of um, like all of these um, uh, animations connected to one another that make one whole interaction or one whole animation. You can trigger uh, through this state controller, you can identify animations, you can trigger them programmatically, you can uh, uh, execute triggers, you can uh, trigger uh, uh, values and whatnot that execute your animation. So this is the artboard. But then you can you you access the artboard through that uh, state machine, and then you control the state machine using inputs, using triggers, and whatnot. So let's let's go back to my screen now. Let me show you how you can initialize like all of these uh, components and whatnot. So here you go. So now what you do is, of course, you need to override the init state. So you do init state, and then you do super dot init state, right? Now you need to uh, pull that and uh, the Rife animation assets, which remember got added through the assets animations. You want to be able to pull this green thumb that Rife animation. How do you do it? Because this is an asset, you have to initialize it here. You say anim equals, you say Rife animation dot asset right there. You could do file, you could do direct, you could do network if it's like hosted somewhere. But because I have it in my assets folder. I use the asset and then you do it like this. You do assets, animations, and then I called it green thumb dot rive, right? Or that that R I V, sorry. Now that you have that, you need to provide a couple more parameters. You need to provide the artboard. What is the main artboard? Back to my slides here. What is the main artboard? The artboard is called tree. If you if we zoom in, in here, uh, well actually uh, it doesn't allow me to zoom in in here, but the artboard, the main artboard right up here is we have one called tree and one called green thumb boss. One single file gives you multiple artboards and you can refer to them programmatically by just passing it here. Artboard, you can pass it as a string. So I'm going to say tree. So remember that is the artboard. You also provide like how you want your widget to fit. Like how would this widget fit inside of this widget? I'm going to say, for example, uh, box fit that contain, meaning if I give it a dimension, it's going to fit itself within those dimensions and it's going to adjust accordingly, keeping the aspect ratio and it's going to adjust accordingly. So good. And last but not least, you're going to need a callback that Rive, when the animation loads in memory and is ready to be executed and the runtime is ready to start uh, rendering it for you, you need an on init method that once Rive, Rive's runtime is warmed up, it's all ready to show you your animation, then you call this animation. I'm going to call it on Rive init. I usually call it like that. And then in this uh, in this callback, the, the only thing that you do in this callback is just now pull the artboard. Remember, the artboard is called tree, is the one that represents the tree. The other one is called green thumb boss, but I want the tree now. So I say void uh, on rife init, and what you get as a, as a parameter through that callback is the artboard. And you could just call it, you know, whatever you want. Now what you do is you initialize the controller, the state machine controller with the artboard. So you say uh, controller, uh, state machine controller from artboard. So now you feed the artboard that comes through here and you give it the name of the state machine. Remember the name of the state machine? Uh, actually, I was typing it here. I just wanted to show you. Uh, but yeah, so this the here is the, this is called tree. This is the artboard. And now here I say on right in it, control state machine controller from artboard like that. And then all I need to do is pass the name of the, of the, you know, the state machine. Now, all I need to do is just feed that control, that state machine controller to the artboard. So I say add controller like that. 
So just with this, I am able to then, uh, yeah, thank you. I was, I was in the other screen. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, now you see, for example, now how I do init state, I initialize the animation. Now this is the callback. And now I pass the artwork. I get the artwork from the callback. I initialize my controller and then I add the controller. That's it. Very little bit of code just to load a complex animation from this. Uh, now let's take a look if I just come over here and say, for example, like um, size box, I'm going to like constrain it to, you know, one given dimension. So just like we did with a little red square, I made it like 100 by 100. So let's make it 100 by 100. And what do you do? What do you add as a child? The animation. So I just do anim and then that's it. So very simple, I was able to load that. Now let's see if I'm able to see the tree being loaded instead of this red square. So now that I save my widget, I come back over to my main um, and then instead of using this container, I'm just gonna import my newly created tree widget. Cause that's all I need. I just say tree widget. Let me add a constant here. Cool, something like that. So you see, now check this out. If I rebuild, and then now if I start clicking, now you see the tree coming up. You see, very cool. You can just come over and exactly what I wanted to do. Every time I click, you see the uh, the Rive animation coming up. You see it pop up and then you even see it still animating. You know, and the reason why I added as a stack and the widgets get added uh, programmatically is so that they could stack on top of each other and you could see a little bit of a uh, depth in there. Maybe what I could do later is like, is there more uh, at the bottom? Maybe they, they're a little bit larger. If they are more above, maybe they're a little bit smaller. And then it kind of looks a little bit like, like it's like, like there's some depth in there. Maybe I, I could also do like some panning around so I can pan around and keep doing that. So you see, I completely dismiss the application, which is okay. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it up again. But yes, you see, like this was very simple. In just a little bit of code, I was able to build something, you know, even passable for a game that is like conscious with the environment that every time you tap, you can plant a tree. And then if you get to a certain level, like, you know, you can just, uh, you know, get rewarded or something. Let's build something like that really simple uh, where you can do something, uh, you know, really cool with uh, with this game. Let's say I'm going to collect like uh, the, let's say the, the score, how many how many, let's say, how many trees I've been clicking. So why don't we do something like that? I'm going to do something super simple. I don't have to go like really crazy. Let's just use, for example, you can use your own uh, state management solution. I'm going to just go regular with a value notifier, a value listenable. Like those are, you know, never, you know, very trusted, you know, uh, you know, good old fashioned value notifier, value listenable builder. They actually get you, you know, really far if you know how to use them correctly. So I just, I just want to keep away, you know, keep track of my, of the, how many trees I'm tapping. And I'm just going to show it like at the corner, like my score or something like that. So why don't we do that? While this is coming up, while my widget is still rebuilding, I'm going to create, so, I'm going to create something like that. I'm going to say, for example, like value notifier. And then I'm going to make it, of course, type integer because I want to keep a, a count of how many trees. So I'm going to call it number of trees. And it's going to say, you know, value notifier zero. Like I have zero trees, you know, uh, coming up, you know, starting my game, right? Then what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to display, yeah, my application is coming up soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep track every time I tap on that, uh, you know, on every tree like this. I want to keep a count on how many trees I'm, I'm clicking, right? So the way that I'm going to do is uh, right above my trees, I'm going to create like a, let's do like an align, uh, like an align widget. Let's align it at the top. Let's do it at the top left, actually. So I'll do uh, alignment, uh, top left. And what do I want to do? I want to do like a little label, maybe a little icon, something like that, like in a row. So let's do child row. Um, and then I'm going to do children. The first thing, let's add like an icon, like a it represents a tree. And I think there's one called like icons that, uh, there's no, there's no tree. Okay. There's one called like park. Oh, there it is. I'll do color. Let's make it white and the size. Let's make it, um, 80 pixels. Let's make a text widget. And then let's, let's do, for example, let's see what it looks. For example, like let's do like 10. Sorry. 
Uh, let's also make it like a textile. I'm gonna make it, uh, let's make it white also. And let's do the font size, uh, you know, 50, something like that. Let's see what it looks. Something like that, you see, it looks right there, but it's been blocked by the, by the, by the header. Let's do something like uh, wrap it around a safe area widget. Also, maybe let's do a little bit of padding. So I'm gonna do a padding widget with like, um, let's do 16 around, all around it. So something like that. Right now it says 10, but there are no 10 widgets. Actually, what we, what I really wanna do is read the value of the value notifier. But first I need to make sure that I'm, for example, like what I could do is I can wrap this whole align widget inside of a value listenable builder, of course. I need to provide my listenable, uh, my, uh, of course, my listenable, what did I call it above? Number of trees, that's the listenable. And the, the builder, of course, and now I'm gonna say return, and then I return my widget. So let's say I'm gonna return this, uh, okay, and I need to read my value. So instead of being 10, I'm gonna say uh, dollar sign value, where I'm gonna be parsing that thing. I don't. I need this, maybe I'll const this as well. So let's see what it looks like. Right now it just says zero, right? But I wanna, I wanna make it so that every time I click, that value increments. So why don't we do that? Very simple. So every time I tap right here on tap down, very simple, remember the way that you do, you say number of trees, number of trees that value, right? That value, um, oh, you're gonna, uh, yeah, plus, uh, yeah, like that. Right, so you incremented by one every time. So let's see now. So here we are. Every time you click, now you see. Oh, okay. So perfect. So now we have you know a bunch of trees. I see my score incrementing. So something like this is you know what I would do on a game like this. Right. Cool. But why don't we make it so that if I reach, for example, like a, a certain amount of a certain amount of trees, I'm gonna show like the the this one. Remember, like the the green thumb boss badge. Like I wanna show that on top of the screen right there. Uh, you know, so that I can tell them, oh, you've reached this milestone. You've uh, done like 20 trees or something like that. Why don't we do something simple like that? But then this is gonna be then where I'm gonna stop it and then in the next office hours, I'm gonna make it so that when you tap on that, it takes you to Google Wallet and then you can add that like a spot of your, like your badges, right? Something like that. So let's do something like that. Let's switch back to the screen. And just so that I can bring that same uh, animation, I'm gonna be reusing the same code that I did for the tree widget because I'm gonna be using Rive Animation and State Machine Controller and the same green thumb assets. So I'm just gonna copy the whole th this whole thing. I'm gonna be creating a new widget called, you know, badge widget, a dart. And I'm gonna just space this whole thing. Let's replace this. Let's call it, you know, badge widget. I, I suck at naming, that's all I'm saying. Let's just keep it like that. But remember, instead of now calling it tree because that's the artboard, remember what my artboard is called here. It's called green thumb boss. I need to make sure that I call it exactly that. So I'm gonna call it green thumb boss. I need that same one and put it right here. Maybe it's not gonna be 100 by 100. I think I probably want it a little larger. Let's try, for example, like just double it, you know, 200 by 400, something like that. But everything else remains the same. You see how cool this is? You can just reuse this. Uh, the way that I usually do it is, is use even one single widget for all my animations, and then I just pass some parameters and then it renders accordingly. That way you can reuse the same code. You see it's like duplicated code, but again, for the sake of this uh, session, we're just gonna keep it simple. So now what do I do? I'm gonna make it so that when the amount of, uh, let's say, uh, values uh, exceed certain amount, let's say like, you know, 10, 20, I wanna show that thing on top of the screen, right? Let's pop it open in front of like, you know, uh, let's just show it right in front of everybody. That way, you know, we can we can see it, and, and people be like, "Oh, cool! I can see." So let's let's show it like a kind of like a, like a dialogue. So why don't we do that? So let's do that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, of course, remember our value listenable builder is listening for you know how many values do I how many trees I've planted. So we're gonna do something simple. 
if value, let's say, equals 20, something like that. You could do something like that. So if value equals 20, you can grab this value, for example, this 20, and you can, for example, have like here, int, uh, you know, max uh, trees, uh, you know, a milestone, and then call it 20. And then we use this value. You could, you know, bring it from your own state management um, you know, a repository or anything. We're just going to keep it simple because we're building the kind of like the logic and then we can clean it up, right? So what I really want to do here is now show a dialog or some sort of overlay that is going to show me that that widget that I created. I called it, what did I call it? Uh, I call my widget batch widget. So that's exactly what I want to do here. So what I want to do is I say show dialog, you know, just use the regular show dialog from Flutter. And then in the builder, in your builder, all you need to, all you want to do is return that batch widget. So you want to return that batch widget right there as a, as a dialog. You don't want it dismissible. So you could do bar dismissible false, right? So if, if it, if it arrives to that milestone, then you want to show it. Um, I don't know if you guys have spotted something already. This is not going to show. This is not going to show. I'm going to show you why. Why? Because you're doing it inside of the builder and you're expecting this to be as part of the same execution of this uh, widget that is in here. Let me show you. If you reload this and then if you get to, you know, oh, blah, 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 have a bunch of widgets, blah, 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 blah. You see, like whenever we got to 20, it just like, uh, um, you know, it just like blew up. You saw it like. It, like if for a brief second it was like you couldn't see it so look when you do this you're like this and then when you get to 20 look you get to this why because you need the overlay actually uh cannot be at in the same frame as you're building your widget so you kind of have to delay it a little bit so the way that people do it out there remember people do like like future dot delay they you know execute it as in a micro task you know, you could do it, you know, whichever way you feel like is appropriate for you. You could do something like, uh, for example, you could do, you know, future dot micro task. And then you can, for example, like rent, uh, like then say, for example, execute your dialogue in here, something like this. Yeah, something like this. So now if I try it. And then, for example, I don't want it to be dismissible. Did I see a comment in there? You could also be done the other way around with the ID to remove the object when selecting any of them. Yes, so Camilo has a really good point. You could definitely go to town. That'd be cool. Like, you could do that. So, see, I'll tap. I'll tap. You know, you can click. And then when you get to 20, now you see, oh, green thumb boss, the badge. But remember, if I click, you know, now at least it shows and it doesn't let me add more. So, you can go to town. You could go. You could do any logic if you want to. So this is what I suggest you guys do. You know, start small, build your core logic, and then you continue building around, you know, that concept. Now to wrap it up, remember that you see the amount of code. We haven't done that much. This is very simple. Remember I told you you can add more animations to this. Remember one of the criteria is overall execution, use of animations, uniqueness of the project you need to be you know stepping it up a notch every time you know you, you you you're thinking about something think about a cool animation that doesn't degrade the performance of your application so why don't we make this animated not just from rive but you can mix up flutter animations explicit flutter animations and rive animations that is the way that i do it so what i'm gonna do is like you see that it, i didn't like the fact that uh i didn't like the fact that my widget just popped up and, and like didn't like gracefully showed. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing now. So we're going to make it so that it fades in. Let's let's make it like more graceful. So when we do this, you know, and we get to 20, uh, 20, there you go. See you instead of just popping in, let's make it so that you can animate it. So the way that you can leverage animations, of course, you can use the core widgets. But I myself, I recommend using Flutter pub add flutter animates flutter animates it's an amazing package that you can use uh that you know with very minimum code it gives you a lot of powerful explicit animations using animation controllers and whatnot but we're very minimum very minimum code so for example what do i want to do with this batch i want to make it so that it um scales like so that it shows like you know zooms in and fades in at the same time so let's do that. So what I want to do with the badge with the badge is 
animated. I'll do dot animate. And that is bringing the package. Then I want to do scale X and Y. Let's uh, begin at, for example, like 20, like a quarter of its size ends at full size. Let's add a curve. Let's do curves dot um, ease in and out. I like, I like using that one. And let's do a duration of like, like 0.25 seconds, something like that. You see, I like this, even like this uh, extension methods that the animate package allows you to, uh, uh, you know, to use, which is pretty cool. Then not only aside from scaling, I want to fade it in. So I could do fade in, you know, at the same duration and with the same curve. So let's see now uh, how it goes. So now let's rebuild it and let's do it again. So instead of just popping in, it's going to zoom in. It's going to uh, fade in. Look, so I'll and then fade in at the same time. So once I get to 20, you see it fades in, zoomed in, but I want it to come from the bottom. So why don't we do that? So you could do, uh, I think here you could say alignment, alignment dot bottom center. That way it zooms in from the bottom. Uh, you could also make it so that it slides in from the bottom. You could do slide Y and you could do begin at, uh, 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 for example, begin at one and at zero, meaning at the original position. Let's use the same curve and duration. And let's see if um, I'm going to get it this time. So let's take a look. So now if I do this, I'm tapping on my trees. I'm planting trees. I'm a green thumb. It came up kind of too quick, but that's okay. Actually, let, let's remove the slide. Let's just keep it the way that it was. Is that you see? Like sometimes, if you overdo stuff, you also mess up the whole, uh, you know, opportunity to, you know, nail the experience with the users. So I like some of the ideas that some of you are submitting. You see, that is what I wanted. Now, what we could do in the next office hours is how do I make this now a badge on Google Wallet? We're going to be exploring the Google Wallet integration. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Very little bit of code. You can take this game much further. I'm actually even going to be pushing it to GitHub. That way you can look at, you know, what I've been building right here. Again, this code is yours. I'm just building it for you guys so that you can get motivated. You can see the way that I'm doing it. I'm going to push this to GitHub uh, a little bit later and you can grab this uh, code. You can play with that. You can see how I do it. You still have time to join um, the the Flutter uh, Global Gamers Challenge. Again, like I said, um, you know, you can use Flutter, Firebase. I'm using Rive. You can use Flame. But remember, the this challenge, again, is uh, it's an eight-week challenge. It's going to end in March 5th. So you still have uh, a couple of weeks to go. Uh, again, you build sustainable games. Think about that cash, man. Think about that cash. Google Wallet, that is what we're going to be discussing next time. We already went through all of this. We already went through the prices. Remember the execution or the, the criteria, overall execution, use of animation, originality, and a lot of cool things that you can implement. And you saw how in less than an hour, I was able to build something decent enough that I can submit. Even if I don't win, I'll probably get that digital digital recognition, right? I'll probably get that swag. I'll probably get that digital recognition, even with something small like this. So I encourage you to join the Flutter Global Gamers Challenge. I encourage you to even add the Google Wallet uh, um, integration so you can get that extra cash if possible. You engage your users, but at the same time, you're joining this global movement for sustainability, for you know becoming conscious with the environment and building cool things along the way. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for joining. This is it. I'm going to wrap it up now. Just wanted to say I'm Roman. I'm a Flutter GDE, Flutter and Dart GDE, lead organizer at GDG Lawrence. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to have a lot more other sessions just like this. Please stay tuned. Um, you know, that way uh, you can see, for example, like some of the other sessions that we're going to be holding where uh, we're going to be showing you more on Flutter, more on animations, more cool stuff, Google Wallet integration and how you even could have a, a, a chance in, um, you know, in, in becoming a Flutter developer as well. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. See you next time. OK, take care, everybody.